Hi guys, welcome to the mini series where we try to dig deeper and understand the most important lessons from Robert Greene's latest book, The Laws of Human Nature. Today we will try to see what exactly the law of fickleness is and why the subtitle that Robert chosen for this one, Make Them Want to Follow You, is appropriate. Stay with me in the next few minutes and we will find out more things about our difficult relationship with authority and how we can become more effective leaders. Let's dive in. We are weird creatures when it comes to authority because we are ambivalent about those in power. We like having someone who knows what they are doing as a leader, but we want to be free to do whatever we want at the same time. Today, we would like to kill the king, while in difficult times we look in the exact same direction with hope. Real authority comes from people's trust and it's the art of creating the appearance of power, legitimacy and fairness so people perceive you as a proper leader to their service. Historically, masses have created huge convulsions and revolutions whenever they felt the trust they gave was misused by those in power. So, it's a thin line and a great responsibility for those who assume leadership. At a personal level, we always think highly of ourselves. We always believe we deserve better. It's a never-ending circle of aiming for more even if we are not willing to do the effort which is necessary for earning more money or living in a healthier environment. We wait for others to do it for us, this being a modern sense of entitlement that comes, if you ask me, from being soft and spoiled. Why do I think we are soft? I know there are still parts of the world where people are struggling with their daily life, but they are fewer than ever before. Western societies experience a unique level of peace or wealth and because we are not worried about food, water or shelter, we look to other directions for reasons to complain. Being soft and entitled attracts the ill feeling of people around but, ironically enough, especially of others who feel the same. If you watch some of my other animations, you already know that I bring the necessity for self-awareness in almost all of the videos I publish. Being soft moves you in the opposite direction and makes you forget that nobody owes you anything. No one is here with a specific objective to make your life better or happier. That's your damn duty. As students of human nature, we need to properly understand all the facets of the authority so we would better position ourselves when we see it. Blindly accepting it or violently refusing it without proper questioning is equally wrong. We need to understand the default nature of our emotions, which is ambivalent. We love and adore someone that we would like to kill sometimes. It's the complexity of human brain mixed with the strong emotions we feel every day. We should realize the need for leadership and properly assess if we are the right persons for the job. Just because you want it more than John, it doesn't mean you should get it. Learn what type of leader is needed, see what he or she needs to do and analyze if your skills fit the profile. We should also remember that everything that we want must be earned, so outworking is one way to do that because no matter what you aim for, it's likely that you are not the only one running after it. So even if you fit better than John, he might feel the same, so you need to search for an edge. Working harder or outsmarting him could be two ways to win the race. If you are the leader, in order to be effective and use the characteristics of authority to your own advantage, you should consider the following. 1. Have a solid and far-reaching vision. 2. Maintain group unity while protecting it. 3. Work to the benefit of the group if you want it to last. 4. Keep in mind that the relationship with those who you lead is dynamic and tumultuous, but the cornerstone is empathy. The moment you think they don't deserve you, that's game over. 5. Understand the small emotional signals from within the group. Regarding this last point, I highly recommend checking the book for strategies on how to establish authority in different groups. I will end this one by adding a new angle to the discussion. I think it's our duty to support the work of our leaders. 
I was speaking with a friend from India a few weeks ago and he told me that he thinks it's not reasonable to ask a few hundred people who lead the country for solutions to solve problems created by more than 1.3 billion citizens. If half of them stop throwing trash on the streets beginning tomorrow, this will add to the efforts of the leaders and it will finish by increasing the chances of a more tidy environment. Leadership is needed to avoid chaos. If you are a leader and you want to really accomplish things, you need to prepare yourself for the moments when you'll be the lone wolf who has to do the right things at the time no one from the group wants or understands the reasons for that. You set the tone and if your values are good enough, in the end, people will follow your lead. My friends, as the population of the earth is growing, I think we need more education on leadership and Robert did a great job with this chapter and the book. For our efforts to be meaningful, we need you to support us. If you think we did a cool job, kindly like, subscribe and click on the bell notification button so you don't miss any updates. Until next time, stay fearless!